when i was to get married and my parents were looking for a suitable match for me even though everything else seemed fine it was getting very difficult to explain to my is the is the sound okay yeah. everything um, it was like getting very difficult to explain to my in-laws about my livelihood the moment one said uh, a photographer the first thing that came to people's mind was wedding photography which unfortunately in those days was not considered to be the best of professions everyone including my now father in law felt that photography was hardly a profession all you guys do is just press a button ye to koi bhi kar sakta hai well press a button there's a saying about taking pictures and it says that when a photographer is about to take a picture the experience of his entire life comes to that finger that presses the shutter that is the power of photography that is the creativity of photography it is going to be a big day today it is nice to see so many stalwarts presenting in one day i'm sure it is going to be an inspiring day for all the photographers present here today today photography as an art form is far more relevant than it ever was especially with the advent of digital photography which leaves very little margin for any technical error photography as an art form is becoming more and more challenging everyone can take pictures no everyone can actually press that button nowadays but whosoever is sensitive enough to get the entire experience of his life on that finger before pressing that button is what the challenge or the creativity all about today i will briefly take you through how photography has evolved as an art form and the digital revolution in photography we are all aware of the pinhole cameras the techniques and how the first camera was made i could have started to talk about that but like i did i realized that if you google you get all the details of how the first camera was made who made it and so on and so forth so i'm going to limit this section to my grandfather mr ramchand mehta who photographed from the late 1920s to the mid 1980s let us start with the kind of cameras that were used during those days i remember my grandfather telling me how cumbersome it was to carry the cameras to locations to shoot when he was young and had a passion for bikes he had actually bought a side car to carry the camera even shooting in the studio required at least one assistant to manage just the lenses and the cameras the first camera that my grandfather used was a wooden gondolfi as the name suggests it used to be a wooden camera with a film back of 8 by 10 or 10 by 12 inches these were plates in which two negatives were loaded at one time before going out to shoot the negatives were loaded in the dark room so whatever was loaded was all that was available to shoot wherever one went photographing with this camera required a combination of anticipation and patience as even the image that was formed as a preview used to be upside down so we can well imagine how challenging it was to use these kind of cameras in the mid 1930s he had bought the quarter plate field camera now these cameras were smaller compared to the wooden gondolfi the negative size in these cameras was less than half of that of the gondolfi during this time he used to shoot with the gondolfi only to get panoramas when he halved the negative he could get a nice wide angle of what he wanted to shoot in fact in 1999 while cleaning the attic in our shop in shrinagar i found a series of negatives that he had very carefully kept in a wooden box these were images that he had done of the landscapes of kashmir in 1932 apart from this 
he had limited the gandolfi to only the studio especially larger groups now as the cameras got smaller my grandfather's photography got more active one could see a lot more images during the mid 30s with the quarter plate field camera the loading of the film was still difficult the plates still had to be loaded in the dark room and taken along but because of easy maneuverability and smaller size he could carry more and shoot more while teaching me bracketing he used to say that sometimes to be sure about the image he also used to do multiple exposures which meant using one extra plate on the same shot during this period he also started to note the exposures on each plate and before washing all the plates he would check the first one by processing it and then tune the others according to the results this became a very popular process and eventually evolved into a technique called the zone system that was coined by ansel adams ansel adams used to underexpose and overprocess the film and vice versa on the depending on the details required in the highlight and the shadows this is equivalent to the hdr or the high dynamic range in digital photography today now the early 40s saw a revolution in photography this was the introduction of the zeiss iconta which also meant the usage of the 120 mm roll can you imagine people who were used to lugging such huge camera bodies now getting a camera which was way smaller and could shoot a film roll i am sure this was as big a revolution as digital was for us so now it was time for the quarter plate field camera to come into the studio we have loads of 5 by 7 inch glass plate negatives that were taken in the studio in those days they were essentially of the royalty and the british who came to shrinagar for holidays even though even though the optics in the lenses used in those days were not that great in quality but the format of the negative compromised very well for it there was such clarity in these images as even in the dark room utmost care was taken to process the film it required a perfectionist to carry on with this profession from shooting in the field to making a print in the dark room i have also had the great fortune of printing with mr ragurai and i can tell you that it reminded me so much of my grandfather the details that he used to manage to get in his prints is still legendary in fact in those days they used to say that to be a good photographer you have to be a good printer otherwise what is the whole idea so photography had finally taken <clears throat> a modern turn in the 40s the role film was set to change the approach of photography and the photographers it was no longer the difficult profession or a job only meant for professionals cameras were all set to come to the homes of people my grandfather also took full advantage of this traveling for him meant taking pictures there's a large bit of the collection that he did with the iconta and the roly flex and then also during the late 50s he graduated to the 35 mm in which he used the wide lux to a great extent it is very nostalgic for me to carry on on this subject but i think i should go ahead i should i shouldn't go ahead as it is now time to come to today or the reality the digital photography now let's see how digital photography has affected us today as i mentioned in the beginning everyone can take pictures photography is just not restricted to only the fact that one needs to buy a good camera anymore the cost of taking pictures has also gone down considerably only because no film is required to shoot anymore it may be because of this reason that photography has become a very lucrative profession as cartier bresson had said in his time your first 10000 pictures are your worst i'm sure if he was to use the same quote today he would have said 
your 100,000 pictures are your worst. There's a lot of interest amongst the youth in photography now. People are getting more and more aware of the techniques and the developments in photography these days. I actually envy this generation as they will now not have to convince their prospective father-in-laws about what being a photographer means anymore. Since this is the age of visuals, everyone is getting so used to seeing beautiful and well-produced images. The kind of detail that one can get now while shooting and then in post-production leaves very little to imagination. Today, photography is all about dreaming. You just have to have a good idea and the digital technology will find ways to reproduce it for you. Good idea is the key. So if they say that photography has become easy with the introduction of digital, I would completely disagree. Photography has become more accessible with digital technology. And at the same time, it needs creativity to sustain it. Just to give a small example about the work being done, done in advertising agencies. Earlier, agencies had impaneled photographers as even small jobs like taking pictures, say, on a white backdrop of an apple would require a photographer. But now, with the kind of digital access, the art directors themselves shoot and submit. They only go to a photographer when they know they need creativity and style. And the more creative you get, the more in demand you will be. It is just purely an art form now. I can safely say that digital photography has finally rested the argument of whether photography is an art form or not. We have reached a level where we have to challenge the technology with our creativity. And so far, technology has been accepting the challenges very gracefully and delivering. Now before, <coughs> let's delve a little upon the different kind of markets and the opportunities that there are for this generation of enviable youngsters. Advertising photography. Advertising is one of the biggest consumer of images. Advertising consists of 80% of the image of the Indian image market. As a beginner, one has two options, whether to become an industrial or tabletop photographer or to do people or fashion. This would mean having an impressive portfolio to take to art directors of the advertising agencies or the corporates. Usually, photographers either assist a senior photographer or do a course that teaches them how to use artificial lights. A good advertising photographer is one who can translate a concept into a good visual. Working on briefs and effectively translating them into visuals is the key. In a sense, one can say that in advertising, you invent images. Like in advertising is to invent images, in editorial, it is to discover images. This means that when things are happening around you, then you have to discover and capture the right moment. This kind of photography has a very wide spectrum from travel to wildlife to news. It is good for people who love to travel and like adventure. Being at the right place at the right time is the key. The ability to observe and capture the moment is what makes you a good editorial photographer. So documenting and exploring the unexplored is the hallmark. Career options are like travel photography, wildlife photography, photojournalism, and so on. The next kind of photography is wedding photography, or as they nowadays say, bridal photography. This is a growing segment. This is the only segment of photography that is B2C, or business to consumer. Like in the developed countries, wedding photography in India is also getting very well organized. As all of us know, Indian weddings are known for their glamour and traditions all over the world. And this is a very good breeding ground for creativity. In fact, Mr. Madhavan here would back me on this. Better Photography had organized a competition on wedding photography recently. 
and it was heartening to see the kind of entries that they got. The next kind of photography is print art. This is another growing segment. A lot of established photographers had made a career out of this. One of the main reasons of this section getting more popular is that prints are much more affordable than the paintings. This is one section where abstract images or approach works beautifully. If you have the eye and the talent to take good abstract pictures, this is what you should be doing. There are lots of avenues nowadays, especially with online portals coming up to promote art. One of the traditional ways to go ahead is to have an exhibition, maybe followed by a book, if you have a sponsor. The next is stock images. Since licensing of images or copyright management is becoming more organized, stock is a natural progression. When a lot of pictures are taken, there has to be a secondary market for the images where they can be licensed. In fact, stock images have developed into an industry of its own. There are photographers who are shooting stock images for stock agencies and making a living out of it. Stock is a cheaper answer to assignments for advertising agencies as well as editorial clients. To be a good stock photographer, one has to have a good sense of the market and be able to predict the trends. The biggest mistake that photographers do is to treat stock as your junkyard, meaning that whatever extra images one has should be sent to a stock agency. This should not be done. So to start with, one should pick up a field in which one wants to specialize, and then pick up a stock agency which caters to that kind of client base. For example, if you're a travel photographer, one needs to find an agency that has good travel images and a name in the market. One should be open to asking the agency before submitting the images about the clients who will buy such images. It is good to keep in touch with the trends. So to conclude, this seems to be the best time for photography as it has become affordable. So the entry barrier has been broken. Because of this being the visual age, usage of images is at its peak. Because of technology, the time of, to market is the least. So it is actually the best time to get into this profession. Photography is rediscovering its own self. Thank you.